name's Annette and welcome back to Cotto Verdi. This channel is normally about flowers and everything that I'm growing in my garden. And whilst today's video is still about things that I'm growing in my garden, today it's about vegetables. Well, actually fruit, because I am sowing tomatoes today. Now I have a long and dodgy history with tomatoes. In our previous property, many, many, many years ago, I grew some tomatoes um, in grow bags because we had a very small garden and I was quite pleased with them, but they all got blight. Then in about 2020, I think it was, I grew some more tomatoes, um, but I grew them here in this property and I put them in a really sunny spot, but I failed to water them consistently and I think that's quite important with tomatoes so whilst the plants grew really well actually the tomatoes didn't fare well a lot of them split which I believe is what happens to the skin if you don't give them consistent water and then some of them got blight but I did get a few tomatoes from those plants but it was very sort of laissez-faire I didn't pay too much attention to them my heart really is with flowers um, so I didn't really take my tomato crop very seriously but this year is going to be different and I have done so much research and I've chosen varieties that I really want and I am going to baby these tomato plants and I'm going to look after them. I'm going to make sure they get consistent water. I'm going to feed them, which I don't think I've ever done before with my tomatoes. So hopefully I'm going to get some amazing crops. So what I thought I'd do today is go through the varieties that I'm going to grow, the ones I've chosen, and talk a little bit about them and why I've chosen them and what they're supposed to be good for, um, and also then show you how I'm going to sow them. Now, I'm sowing them today on March the 15th, and I don't know if you follow Charles Dowding, he's the king of no dig, but also I think of just vegetables in general. He really does know his stuff, and he says that the best date to sow your tomato seeds is about March the 10th. So I'm pretty much spot on, give or take a few days. Um, but obviously that depends on, you know, what region you're in, what zone you're in. I live in South Bucks. This is, equi is equivalent to a zone 8B in the US. So as I said, I'm sowing today on March the 15th. They should germinate pretty quickly. I'm going to sow them into cell trays and I'm going to put them, um, keep them inside until it's warm enough to put them outside. So they are going to be on my grow shelves here in the kitchen. Tomatoes are supposed to be one of the easiest things to grow. You know, kids can do it. And I have to say that even though I haven't paid much attention to my tomato plants in the past when I've tried to grow them, um, I have definitely managed to germinate seeds and get the plants to grow. But I really do want some decent tomato crops this year. So watch this space. I will definitely keep you updated. If you're interested in seeing all my updates about tomato plants, I'll start a new playlist. And if you subscribe to my channel, you'll get notifications um, whenever I post something. So you can you know, keep on top of my tomato story. Having done some research about tomato plants, I now know that there are two different types of tomato plants. So there's a determinate variety and an indeterminate variety. And common name for these are for the determinate variety they're generally bush tomatoes and they'll grow to a certain height and then they'll start just making bigger plants and then there are the indeterminate ones which are cordon tomatoes and these just keep growing taller and taller and you're supposed to pinch out the little um, branches off the main stem and you, with cordon tomatoes you really have to stake them quite well and you can do this um, in various different ways depending on where you're growing them. I'm going to be growing mine predominantly into beds and so I'll just stake them with bamboo canes and that's worked pretty well in the past for me. All of the tomatoes that I'm growing this season are to some extent either really good at resisting blight or fairly good at resisting blight and so just assume that that's the case with all of them because I probably won't just keep repeating myself with that unless it's particular so there's one particular variety that is supposed to be super super resistant to blight um, and blight in case you don't know with tomatoes is a disease that tomatoes get um, where it turns the tomatoes they get like little black spots, the stems get black spots on them. Um, I can describe this to you because I've had blight on my tomatoes before and I really do want to avoid having any blight this year. I don't know whether I'm gonna be successful at that, but um, let's see. The first tomato I'm growing is called San Mazzano 2 and this is a canning tomato. Well, you can eat it, 
but it's predominantly used for canning, so for cooking and then preserving. And quite often you'll find in Italy that they are the tomatoes that are in canned tomatoes. Um, you know, if you buy a can of tomato, it's a San Marzano. So San Marzano is an indeterminate tomato, so it's a cordon tomato. So that means that you do need to pinch out the little side shoots. The San Marzano tomato is prized worldwide and in Italy for its thick flesh and sweet flavour. It's got a lower water content and less seeds than a lot of other tomatoes, which is why it's particularly good for canning and sauces, you know, making tomato sauce. So the next ones that I'm growing are all beefsteak tomatoes. So they're like the really big tomatoes that you get. And some of them have got like really nice sort of lines on them, sort of a little bit pumpkin-y I suppose you'd call it and they really appeal to me whenever I see these in the supermarket I really want to buy some they're the tomatoes that remind me of eating mozzarella salad in Italy you know salad caprese and I, I love the flavour, I love the texture of these tomatoes and so I really wanted to grow some and I think actually because they're so big you get less on each plant than you do for instance if you're growing cherry tomatoes and because they're so big they're also going to be more tricky for me to ripen here in the UK. Of course if we get a summer like last summer where it was consistently really really hot um, and dry then I'll probably have really good success but with some of these I may grow them in my little zippy greenhouses with the fronts open but just to sort of contain the heat on three sides. The first beef stick I'm growing is the Super Marmande and this is a semi-determinant or semi-bush. So what this means is it's a bit like a cordon but it's only going to grow to a certain height and then it's going to start making side shoots but you don't need to pinch the side shoots off um, but you will get a better yield if you do pinch the side shoots off. So you don't have to, it's up to you. It depends on the yield you want and I suppose the size of tomatoes that you want. So the Super Marmande is your typical sort of, um, what I think of it as like the French tomato. It's the one you see in the French markets. It's kind of got like, you know, little bumps all over it. It really does look a bit like a, a red pumpkin. <laughs> It says here in my notes that the Super Marmande has the taste of Provence, so it really is like the French one. It's got a very rich, sweet flavour and firm flesh, and it's only got a few seeds. Each fruit from these tomato plants is going to average between 160 and 180 grams, so that's kind of like a large tomato. And the Super Marmande is an early crop, um, grown best outside, and it's better in colder locations than in warm ones. You do have to stake it because I guess the, the fruit's so heavy. So this is why I've chosen a Super Marmande is because I think I stand a better chance of getting ripe fruit here because it says it's better in cold locations. I am also growing the Marmande beefsteak tomato and this again is a semi-determinant cordon tomato. It grows to about one and a half meters tall. It's your classic beefsteak tomato with the large ribbing on the fruit and very few seeds and the Marmande tomatoes grow up to 500 grams. That's a huge tomato. <laughs> it does say that they're not going to ripen until the beginning of August so hopefully with the Super Marmande which is earlier cropping and then the Marmande which won't ripen until the beginning of August hopefully I'll get the best of both worlds with these. It does say with the Marmande that it needs warmth and it's best suited to greenhouses. So this is one of the tomatoes that I am going to keep in my zippy greenhouse and see whether that helps the fruit to ripen. The next one I'm growing, I'm quite excited about. I really don't know how much success I'm gonna have, but the thing is, if you don't try, you never know. So the next one is called Gigantimo and it is an indeterminate or cordon variety. So I do need to pinch the side shoots on this one and it will definitely need staking because as you can imagine with a name like Gigantimo, the fruits on this one are going to be absolutely enormous. So. <laughs> It's apparently the world's largest beefsteak tomato and the fruits weigh up to 1.3 kilograms. I can't imagine that, but um, from the pictures that I've seen online, it really is, you know, more than a handful of a tomato. I don't know whether mine are going to get that big. We'll have to see. I'm very excited though. If I manage to grow just one tomato that size, I won't stop going on about it. You can be assured of that. <laughs> so apparently the Gigantimo has excellent flavour and a fleshy texture. And 
you'll get about 11 fruits per plant. I, that would be absolutely amazing. It's also best sown under glass, i.e. in a greenhouse, because that would just give the fruits longer to ripen. So this is another one that's going to be planted in my second zippy greenhouse. I've got three. So I've only got the choice of three things that I can grow in these zippy greenhouses. I really wish I had a big greenhouse one day. And then the last beefsteak tomato I'm growing is called Borsalino. And this is what's also known as the, an ox heart tomato because it kind of is that shape. I think Borsalino is a really, really pretty shape and I'm very excited about growing this tomato and I hope I get absolutely loads of fruits. <laughs> so it's also an indeterminate or cordon tomato. It's got tasty, deep red, meaty flesh and the fruits on these weigh between 180 grams and 200 grams and it does say it's better in a greenhouse but it only says it's better in a greenhouse so i'm going to put this one out in the garden in a sunny spot and hope for the best the next few tomatoes are slicing tomatoes and i'm starting with one called crimson crush which is an indeterminate or cordon variety so you need to pinch out the side shoots this one was new in 2015 and it was reputed to be 100% resistant to both early and late blight. So I'm very excited to see whether that actually works for me. It'd be wonderful to have at least one tomato plant where I didn't have to worry about blight. So the Crimson Crush tomatoes are large, but not beefsteak size large, but they're large enough to make really good slicing tomatoes. They're full of flavor, full of flavor and sweet, and the fruit is going to be about 200 grams. It's not a particularly vigorous grower either. So that's quite good if you've got a smaller garden or less space. The next slicing tomato I'm growing is called Mountain Fresh Plus. It is a determinate or bush variety, so no need to worry about pinching out the side shoots. And this one is a jumbo slicer with really high yields, and each fruit is between 225 and 335 grams. It's kind of a wide range. It's very firm, sweet and smooth and flavorful, and it tolerates cool, wet conditions. So this is another reason why I've chosen this particular tomato um, amongst all the other slices is because I think if we happen to have a colder, wetter summer, then I'll at least get some tomatoes from this one, hopefully. The next lot of tomatoes I'm growing are medium-sized tomatoes, and I think they're often referred to as Campari tomatoes. Um, don't quote me on that, but my research um, indicated that that was the case. So the first one I'm growing is another mountain one. I'm growing Mountain Magic. So Mountain Magic is an indeterminate cordon variety. It's deliciously sweet. It's got a good resistance to early and late blight as well as cracking. It's a prolific cropper with fruit up to 85 grams. I'm also sowing uh, the very famous Gardener's Delight. Uh, Gardener's Delight is an indeterminate cordon variety. It's an early large cherry tomato. It's good inside or outside the greenhouse with Gardener's Delight because all the tomatoes tomatoes on each vine ripen at the same time. It's really good as, you know, one of the tomatoes where you can pull the vine off and roast the tomatoes on the vine and serve them that way. It's also reliably prolific. I'm having trouble saying reliably prolific. <laughs> it reliably fruits a lot. The next one I'm going is Golden Sunrise, and this is the first of my yellow colored tomatoes. So Golden Sunrise is indeterminate cordon variety and it's considered by many to be the best flavored tomato. It's nice and fleshy with a golden color and it's early to mature. It's sweet and fruity in flavor and obviously it's going to add color to your salads and things like that. I have to say that when a tomato is professed to be, you know, the best tomato around, I've read that so many times with you know, researching which tomatoes I'm going to grow this year that I think almost every tomato thinks that it's the best tomato around. The next one I'm growing is Amateur. Amateur is a determinate or bush variety tomato. It's an earlier ripening tomato with fruit up to 85 grams and it's got a good flavor. It stops growing at about 90 centimeters and so you don't need to stake it. It's got good yields whether you grow it inside or outside of the greenhouse. And then we're on to my last category of tomatoes, which are the cherry tomatoes. I love cherry tomatoes. I predominantly only buy cherry tomatoes really from the supermarket. I think they're sweeter tasting with like this bite of acidity. I just, 
I find them the most flavorful tomatoes. The first one I'm growing is Cherry Baby and it's indeterminate or cordon variety. And it is super productive with a very sweet and tangy flavored fruit. And it fruits throughout the summer and early autumn. If given the right conditions, apparently I'll get 350 grams of fruit and each one will weigh about 20 grams. This is um, a good variety for a patio container. In fact, lots of the cherries are, I think. The next one I'm growing is Cherry Falls and it's a determinate or bush variety. It's only going to reach about six inches tall, but the cascades, the cascading part of the plant is going to get up to like three foot. So it really is particularly good for like a tall container or a hanging basket. I think it would look absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the flavor of cherry falls is sweet and tangy. The next one I'm growing is micro cherry and this is a determinate or bush variety. And the micro cherry are large plants with long cascade branches full of really small fruit, much smaller than a cherry. It's the ultimate hanging basket tomato apparently. The juicy fruit are sweet and tangy and they've got a thin skin. The next one I'm growing is Santonio and this is a baby plum tomato or a grape tomato I think it's also called. It's indeterminate or cordon. Santonio has good length trusses. The fruits are about eight grams each. They've got an exceptional flavor with a sweet acidic balance. And they're described as glossy cherry sized plum shaped fruit. I'm also growing Tutti Frutti, another indeterminate or cordon variety. These are again, more of sort of the grape shape. They've got a high sugar content and are very tasty. This is a really vigorous plant with heavy cropping and fruits up to 20 grams. And this is like an ideal snacking variety, apparently. I'm also growing a yellow cherry called Golden Crown. This again is an indeterminate or cordon variety. I think it's also called Gold Crone. And this apparently is outstanding and the best tasting yellow cherry tomato. <laughs> As I said, so many tomatoes claim to be the best tasting, but I feel like the two yellow ones that I've chosen are the best tasting ones, apparently. So this one has up to 50 fruits per truss. They're firm with a sweet flavor and apparently they mature early. So that will be kind of cool to have some early ones. The last tomato I'm growing is called Rosella and I'm quite excited about this. I think it's another indeterminate variety, so cordon. The reason I'm excited about this one is because it's got a unique color to it. It's like this deep cherry pink with like um, a green shoulder to it on the top. Apparently the taste is a blend between raspberry, blackcurrant and other summer fruits. It's almost seedless and has a sweet, slightly tart and tangy finish. So now I'm just going to sow my tomatoes. So I'm going to put um, one or two seeds into each cell. I'm sowing them in the normal cell trays that I use. You can of course sow tomatoes in absolutely anything. You can sow them in, you know, old fruit containers or old pots. You can just sprinkle some on the surface and then prick them out. So, you know, don't feel like you need to have a special seed tray in order to sow tomatoes. You really don't. With each of my labels, I've written on the back whether it's indeterminate or cordon or determinate and bush. And that way I'm going to know when I come to looking after my plants, when they're planted out, um, I'll know whether or not I need to pinch out the side shoots or not, because otherwise I think I'm going to get very confused. So I'm just going to place one on top of the compost in each little cell. If I end up with more tomato plants than I need, then I'll just give them away. The compost I'm using is the one that I always use, which is the Melcourt Silver Grow Petri Compost. And it's um, always worked for me, so I'm just going to carry on using that. Um, and there is a link below if you just want to see which one it is. There's a link in the description box below. Okay, then what I'm going to do is just dampen down the seed, just to make sure each one has got good contact with the compost. And then I'm going to sprinkle some more compost on top. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to my tray with water in it and I'm going to bottom water the whole tray. By bottom water I mean I'm going to sit it in a tray that's already got water in it and the compost is going to absorb that water through capillary action and the whole of the compost in each cell will become damp. Then I'm going to drain it and then I'm going to put it 
over on my rack underneath the lights. So the other thing that tomato plants like in order to germinate is they would like humidity. And the way you can do this is either to put some cling film on top or you could put one of those clear plastic domes. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a clear plastic dome on the top in order to keep the humidity high and help those seeds to germinate. You can use heat, like a heat mat if you want, or a radiator to help your seeds germinate faster. But a warm sunny windowsill is going to do the job just as beautifully. So that's it for today. I've finished sowing all my tomatoes and I've put them on the shelves and I'm just going to keep my fingers crossed and hope that they all germinate. If they all germinate, I'm going to have about 50 plants. So um, maybe it'd be a good idea if they didn't all germinate because <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to plant them. I'm going to need a new bed for that. But the garden's big enough. I should definitely be able to grow all these tomatoes. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video and I really encourage everybody to try their hand at growing something that they can eat because it, is, it gives so much pleasure to be able to get something from the garden and put it on a plate and for either yourself or your family and friends to enjoy something that you've grown yourself, not to mention the fact that it's going to cost less and it's not going to have any pesticides on it. Well, unless you use pesticides, but I advocate not using pesticides. So it's, and I think also quite often the flavor is better if it's just come straight from your garden that day. It's got more nutrients and vitamins in it. Um, so yeah, I, I just, it's not too late to sow some tomato seeds, go and grab some and get sowing and let's grow some tomatoes together. I am very excited about my summer cropping. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do give it a like because that tells YouTube to show it to more people and I would really appreciate that. And as I said earlier, if you want to see how my tomato plants do, then do subscribe to my channel and hit the little notification bell so that you get notified whenever I film an update. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.